In these problems, we'll be analyzing free body diagrams given the coefficient of static and kinetic friction. All right, so this problem shows us we have a person that are applying various forces to a box as shown. So the forces that they apply range from 200 to 600 newtons. And that's applied right here. We also have the object's weight and a normal force as well as a friction as shown. So to start off with, we know that since we are on flat ground, the normal force is going to be equal to the weight. So our normal force will be 900 newtons. The first thing we want to do is calculate the maximum frictional force. So to do that, I'm going to use the equation F equals mu times N. I'm going to do that for static and kinetic friction. All right, so multiplying 0.55 times 900 gives me 495 for the maximum static friction and multiplying 0.45 times 900 gives me 405. So let's start by remembering that static means not moving while kinetic means moving. First we say, okay, when the object is not moving, the biggest the friction can be is 495 newtons. So if I apply any force that is less than 495 newtons, then our object is not going to slide. So let me write down no for when the person applies a 200 newton force, a 300 newton force, and a 400 newton force. All right, so let's take a look at the example of what if our person applied a 200 newton force. If we applied a 200 newton force, the box is not going to slide, and that means the forces are going to be balanced. So if the forces are balanced, then this frictional force must also be 200 newtons. In that case, since the forces are balanced, we must have zero net force. All right, so let's change this up and say, what if we applied a 300 newton force? Well, again, our friction could be 300 newtons to prevent our object from moving. And our net force will be zero. Same thing, if I apply a 400 newton force, then the friction will just be 400 newtons, and again, our object doesn't move. What happens if we exceed this 495 newton limit? So, if I apply a 500 newton force, it would take 500 newtons of friction to stop this, but the maximum static friction is 495 newtons. Well, that means our box is going to slide. And our box will end up sliding to the right. So now we have 500 newtons as our applied force, but our object is moving. Since our object is moving, our kinetic friction is only going to be 405. To get my net force, I'll subtract 500 minus 405, and that will give me 95 newtons as my net force. If I change my applied force to 600 newtons, we can't stop that with static friction, so we'll still slide to the right. Anytime we're moving, our friction will be 405, will be equal to our kinetic friction. Now this time our net force would be 600 minus 405, which would give us 195 newtons. All right, let's take a look at a few more problems. So this problem is almost exactly the same. So I want to start off by saying that fill out any unknown forces over here. So if my weight is 50 newtons, this object is on a flat table, then I'm going to have a 50 newton normal force. My first step is to figure out the maximum static friction and the kinetic friction. 
So if I multiply 50 by 0.25, I figure out that the maximum static friction is going to be twelve point five newtons and the kinetic friction would be ten newtons so I know that let's first cancel out some forces alright so we're going to look at the system together if I'm looking at the system I don't need to worry about the tensions those are internal forces I also know that these fifty newton forces are balancing so the two forces I'm really comparing here are going to be my friction and the weight of this hanging box. Alright, so I know this friction must be, if, this, uh, if the weight of this box exceeds 12.5, then this friction is not going to be big enough to prevent us from sliding. So let me say, okay, if my friction exceed, if the, my weight of box 2 exceeds 12.5, I know I'm going to slide if my weight is less then I'm not going to slide so no no yes to the right in all three of the remaining cases alright so first case if I say this box weighs five newtons then I would need a five newton friction to stop us. Again, the force is balanced, and I have no net force on my system. If I increase the weight of this box to 10 newtons, then I have a 10 newton friction required to stop us, which is allowed because my maximum static friction is 10 newtons again giving me a net force of zero. I drew this line here to tell me something significant changes right here. Now if I have a 15 newton box 2, this friction can't be 15 because the maximum static friction, the maximum force that can hold this box still, frictional force, is 12.5. That means I'm left with a 10 newton friction because once we start sliding, let me draw some motion lines here, then that means this kinetic friction automatically becomes 10 newtons. Alright, in that case I would subtract 15 and 10 and give me 5. If I changed, um, no, no matter what, anytime I apply any, I have a box that's heavy enough to make this slide, then my friction will be the kinetic friction which is 10 newtons to get my net force I know I'm just subtracting W2 minus my frictional force so 20 minus 10 would give me 10 and then 25 minus 10 would give me 15 All right, this problem will be similar, so let me just give you some hints on this. Is it just make sure that you keep in mind that this normal force will not be equal to the weight because we have another vertical force. So I like to remind myself that we never look at the hypotenuse because that force was resolved and replaced by these two. The object is on a flat surface, so these three forces must balance each other. So in this case, my normal force would be my weight minus my vertical tension, so 550 minus 101 would give me 449 newtons. Alright, then you'd follow the similar process as before. Let's go ahead and skip down to my next problem. Make sure you are, this one wants to remind you that my normal force would balance my normal weight component so these would balance out. Make sure you use the normal force, not the weight, to figure out your static and kinetic frictions. And then you'd be comparing those to the most important force right here, which is the downhill weight component. Again, we resolve the hypotenuse, so we're not looking at the weight itself. 
Alright, I did want to take the time to do this. This may be on your account. So in this case, we have a little bit trickier problem because we have weights hanging on both sides. So we start like we usually do and say that the weight is 40 newtons, which means my normal force is also 40 newtons. I can use my normal force then to calculate my static friction and my maximum static friction as well as my kinetic friction. So my static friction is equal to 40 times 0.2, which gives me 8 newtons. And my kinetic friction would equal 40 times 0.15, which would give me 6 newtons. All right, so this one gets trickier. So let's say that the weight on the left side in our first case is equal to 10 newtons. I should go ahead and figure out what forces I can ignore. All the tensions are internal forces. Since I'm looking at the entire system, I can cross those out. The normal force and the weight of the box on the table will balance out. So what I'm really left with is I'm looking at my weight on the left side versus my weight on the right side. All right, so I always ask myself, how much friction would it take to prevent this box from sliding? Okay, so I have right now my amount of unbalance is 15 newtons, 25 minus 10. I know that the static friction at most could be 8 newtons. So, actually let's back up just a second. If I have a larger force on the right side, so in this case the larger force is on the right side, my system is trying to move in this direction. If my system is trying to move that way, that means the box on the top is trying to slide to the right. So my friction is going to be to the left. All right. Well, I ask myself now, could an 8 Newton friction stop me from sliding? And the answer is no, because 25 minus 10 gives me 15. So since the static friction is less than 15, I know this block is going to slide to the right. Since my box is sliding, then I know that the friction is going to be 6. All right, so looking at the forces I have now, I have 25 newtons trying to move this system clockwise, and I have 16 newtons going back the other way, which gives me a net force of 9 newtons. All right, if we change the weight on the left side to 20 newtons, I still have a bigger force on the right side here. So that means I'm still trying to make things go to the right. So I'll still have this friction to the left. But now let's look at how much unbalance I have. So now, I have 25 newtons trying to pull this box to the right, 20 newtons trying to pull the box to the left. That means the difference is 5. That means, since my static friction is allowed to be 8, I could have this 5 newton friction to the left and prevent anything from sliding. So let me erase this. All right. So, my friction is now 5 newtons, which can stop me from sliding and give me a net force of zero. All right, let's erase and try this again. All right, so now we change the weight on the left side to 30 newtons. Now notice that on the left side, we have more force than we do on the right side. That means my system is at least trying to move to the left which means my friction will now be to the right. Now 30 versus 25, I know that gives me an unbalanced right now of 5. My static friction can be as large as 8, so I'm going to have a 5 Newton force to the right, which can stop me from, stop the system from moving. So now I have a 5 Newton force to the right, 
which means I don't have to, which means the system will not slide and my net force will be zero. All right, two more. So changing this now to 40 newtons, I again have more force on the left hand side, 40 versus my 25 on the right. Since I have more force to the left, that gives me a friction to the right. The unbalance so far is 15, which means my static friction of 8 can't stop it, which means I am going to slide, but in this case, to the left. And again, my friction is still to the right. Anytime the box slides, the friction will be 6 newtons. So now I have 40 newtons trying to pull my system counterclockwise versus 31 newtons trying to pull my system clockwise and I get 9 newtons as my net force on the system. One more. We change this to 50 newtons. Again more force on the left means the friction to the right. The unbalance 50 versus 25 is 25 which is way too big for my static friction which means I still have a 6 newton friction to the right, meaning the box will slide to the left. And now my net force is 50 versus 31, or 19 newtons total. All right, our last problem we're just going to talk about so just to start off, I'll just start out and let you finish it on with your own numbers. So we know that the, first of all, the weight of box one right here is 57 newtons, but that was broken down into a 27 newton downhill wo weight component and a 50 newton normal weight component. So my normal force will be 50, which will be what I'll use to calculate my maximum static friction as well as my kinetic friction. We know that the normal weight component and the normal force itself will balance out. The tensions are internal forces, so I can cross those off. And I'm left with the important forces I need to look at are W2, which again is varied in this problem, and this 27 newtons, the downhill weight component. So comparing that 27 to W2 and using your static and kinetic friction, you can figure that one out. All right, this was a long video, but I think it's worth it. It's a tricky subject, but once you can really get it in your head and figure it out, you'll get it.